and welcome to Solutions, a program about Falmouth and the challenges and issues we face in our community and those people who are working to get those solutions solved. And today we're talking about our local economy. I'm your host, Eileen Preston, and specifically what we're talking about is how do towns generate economies, how do they make diverse economies with lots of jobs created for people and a larger expanded tax base? And how do people who want to be businesses, who want to make businesses and be entre entrepreneurs who may have not enough funds or the right proper skills, how do they get there? Well, today we're talking to a nonprofit, Enter E for All, a program that works with both of those problems and makes a solution. We're talking to e for alls program director, Shelley Carduce, and with us also is an entrepreneur, and that's Kristen Marshall, who's also a Falmouth resident, right? Yes. Right, ladies, thanks very much for being here. Shelley, I want to start with you, if I could. Can you tell us a little bit about e for all how it started, where it started? Sure, so e for all stands for Entrepreneurship for All. It started in Lowell, Massachusetts in 2010. And um, it's been, it was in Lowell and Lawrence for a few years, and then it expanded to New Bedford and Fall River in 2015. So the first expansion was the south coast of Mass. After that, EFRL also launched in Lynn as well. So we're currently in five different cities. We have the program in English, and we also have it in Spanish. We have the very first fully Spanish-speaking accelerator in the nation, and that happens in Lawrence, Mass, and Lynn as well. Fabulous. And then I think I heard you might be coming to the Cape. There are some discussions about being on the Cape, which is great because we have had entrepreneurs that have participated in e for all South Coast from the Cape. They've come to different programs, but we've had a lot of questions of, can you get closer to the Cape? Can you sure. be on the Cape? So we are definitely in talks of that. So exactly how does someone participate in e for all What do they do? So what e for all is, it's a it's a nonprofit that has a few different programs, and the biggest program is called an accelerator. What that is, it's a one-year program where the first three months is pretty intense. The entrepreneurs come to classes two times a week to learn about all different types of skills and really learn how to take an idea and turn it into a business. They also meet with mentors. They can use co-working space. There's a chance of winning some money. And then for the nine months after those first intensive months, they still talk to their mentors, they still meet with e for all quarterly, and we really check in on goals. Other than that, we have a uh, pitch contest. We run those about four times a year. It's a lot like Shark Tank, but without the teeth. No, really community too. focused. It's a chance to win some prize money. But besides the prize money, it's a great opportunity to get some feedback. It's really hard for a new entrepreneur to get unbiased feedback. Mm. You know, say you have a new idea and you tell your family. They may say, oh, I'm proud of you, that's great. Or they right. may say, that's too high risk, don't do it. Because people that are close to you sometimes don't have that unbiased from the outward looking, you know, just being able to offer some suggestions and some advice. So that's what's really great about these pitch contests. So um, that's interesting. Now, as far as the training, I would think that there's so many different areas someone needs to learn. Um, now, Kristen, as you participated in this, you have an MBA, but that's not the typical student. Is that right? You know, it's funny. We say it's uh, the phrase we use a lot is no degrees to PhDs, or some people will say GEDs to PhDs. There's really quite a range of people in the program where some people do have more formal education, some people don't. We've, actually, we've had some people that have never even thought of owning a business. We've actually even had business owners, but they're doing a whole new venture that they just are in a field they don't know anything about. And we've seen that people with any type of background like that can still really benefit from the way that our curriculum is set up. So as far as the classroom is concerned, you say it's two days a week, is that right? Mm -hmm. And how many hours is that? So it's a total of five classroom hours a week, and then it's another 90 minutes of meeting with a mentor outside of the classroom, and that could be um, any day or time during the week. And you're in a cohort of people. Mm -hmm. I think we have a slide, Chris, of people that are in a cohort together, and that must be helpful to be with people with different, yeah. and they must all have different ideas, right? Different types of businesses. Yep, we bring people in from any industry. There are some accelerators like ours in different parts of the country that focus just on food or just in tech. We love getting people from all different backgrounds and the, the way that they can help each other and support each other through it is pretty amazing. 
And what kinds of businesses do you have? I think I saw one about robots. Yeah, we have. I mean, we've had electric motorcycles. We've had bacon themed food trucks. We have everything from services to products to retail. Um, we've I had, thought I saw someone made handbags. Oh yeah, great handbags handbag for, women on, for women on the go. It's amazing. I, I use it all the time because you can have your comfortable shoes and then have your heels in this bottom pocket. Oh, brilliant. So you don't have to have, you know, so many women you see, especially, you know, in the um, metropolitan areas on a train, you see with a multiple bag. Sure, yeah. So it's just a way to have everything in one place, which is really great. So we have products like that, um, an architectural glass designer. And some people are in the program and they're looking to open up a brick and mortar. And, you know, we've had right. people that soon after have 30 employees. And there are other people that are really participating in the program just to bring a, a bit more money home for their family. And maybe it's motivational speaking at, a, at high schools. You know, really quite a range of, of ideas, how big they are, how many employees that they'll have after the program. And so let's get to your business now, Kristen. Sure. What was your business and how did it all come about at e for all Right, so I have an adult summer camp uh, and it's specifically for cross-fitters, but I wasn't, and so it's a series of uh, adult summer camps across the country. And it's Camp It's time called out. Camp Time Out. Uh -huh. And uh, it's very much kind of like a Spart the Spartan Race of Summer Camp. So it's fitness-based. Um, it brings the nostalgia of your summer camp experience and it pairs it with uh, your fitness experiences. So not only do you get to row a canoe and shoot a bow and arrow, but we bring in yoga instructors and uh, fitness instructors. And so we package it all up and, and that's a weekend of summer. And there's marshmallows. There, there's uh, there's yeah. always marshmallows. marshmallows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's right. for a weekend. It's for a weekend. It's built for, so Camp Time Out is catered to a CrossFit athlete. Right. And so 3.9% of Americans say that they do CrossFit. And uh, so we're building it for that specific niche. And um, Sorry, did e for all train you to go after a specific niche? Did they say? Uh, it was something. <laughs> Interestingly, I went into the program uh, and knew that I was going to do a summer camp for adults. Okay. And I matched with mentors, which I think we'll talk about later. But during our mentor matching process, I, I told potential mentors, we're going to do this summer camp for adults. And they got on board. And we showed up at the first meeting, and I said, you know what? It's not just for any adult. It's for CrossFit adults. And they're like, no, no, no. We hate it. Like, we're not CrossFitters. We hate this idea. And uh, But I just knew that I wanted to do it for a really specific audience, that I could build it, build something that a few people would love, not yes. that a lot of people would kind of like and maybe buy. And so that's we're going for the yeah really specific audience. Very savvy. Yeah. So um, where are you located? Uh, your camps. HQ, HQ is right here in Falmouth, yeah. but uh, it's it's a pretty interesting setup. Essentially, uh, I get exclusive use of any camp across the country. And so, for instance, in 2018, we had camps in Massachusetts and Colorado and Virginia. And so we kind of we kind of bounce around, and uh, I, I find local coaches uh, who are willing to help. And um, so essentially, we're not tied to one location. We're across yeah. the country. Yeah. And how many mentors did you have with E4All? Uh, all the entrepreneurs get three mentors. We okay. match with three. Okay. Um, and going in, I, I thought, you know what? I need help with marketing. I need a marketer. I need help with accounting. I need an accountant. Right. And uh, it's funny. You don't necessarily get matched with uh, exactly who you think you might need. But, it, but you realize it's early on in the process. So it's your first three months of an idea generally. And so you really need folks who aren't specialists, but who are just ideas, who are creative people, mm -hmm. who can listen, listen to your journey and think about, what, what are we going to name this business? Uh, where, what's a great direction for this business? And so it's great when you can find mentors to help you um, who have kind of specialties, but it's also great to have generalists. How do you get the mentors linked up with the uh, entrepreneurs? That's a good question. So. At EG for All site, there's only two full-time staff people. Sometimes there may be an, an intern as well, but normally just two people on staff, and really their job is to leverage a lot of volunteers. So they recruit um, volunteers, and if they're going to have a full cohort of entrepreneurs, it's 15 entrepreneurs, which means there's 45 mentors. Oh, goodness. And once we have everybody signed up, once people are accepted into the program and mentors are signed up, we do these really fun events. It's called mentor matching, and it's just like speed dating, where we literally sit 
the entrepreneurs and the mentors across from each other at a table and we give them six minutes to just, you know, t let me tell you about my idea. Why do you want to mentor? And they go back and forth and, and have a conversation. And through that, we have built some software through Referral where we take their schedule of availability during a given week on when they'd be able to meet. And then we let them rate each other based on how much they would want to meet meet with that person. And we do tell people, like Kristen said, don't look for a specific skill. Or if you're a mentor that's owned a restaurant, it doesn't mean that you can only help somebody that wants to open a restaurant. There right. could be somebody else that you just love talking to, you love how they're thinking about it. And um, so it, and it's really cool to see how the three mentors works with the entrepreneur because you have that combination of thoughts. And I'm sure you would experience that where some people may be more on board with one idea and another mm -hmm. person's not so sure, but you have that variety of thought. And some of the mentors, some of the uh, professions that they come from are in venture capitalists. Yeah, I mean, we really have quite a variety. So we have some retired CEOs. We have some people that are definitely have been in, uh, into investing. We have some CFOs, some people that are into marketing. The mentors don't need to be entrepreneurs themselves as long as they have some general business knowledge. They care yeah. about entrepreneurship. They care about the community. They understand that our program really is for everyone. I mean, that's very important to us that people understand the, the values that Eferal carries and the diversity of people that are in the program. And um, we've, we've definitely, when, when entrepreneurs come into the program, a lot of times they're like, they see that there may be some cash and they see that. And then they see, oh, there's classes, oh, there's mentors. But a lot of times when they leave, it's the mentors and the cohort that they were with that's like one of the biggest um, takeaways from it. That the classes certainly help. And listen, every cash helps of too. Course, yes. It's just that there's so much learning that goes on uh, with those mentors. And the classes, those are run by volunteers as well. Okay. So the staff basically goes into the community and finds like who's the best person to talk about social media in my community or who's the best person to talk about law like very specifically for startups. And the classes are very interactive, a lot of workshops, not just canned PowerPoints, um, very interactive with the entrepreneurs. And do you keep in touch with your cohort at all, Kristen? I do. In fact, let me, let me check down the list of how they helped out with camp. Shelly was the camp MC. <laughs> uh, Kevin, who was in my cohort, was the self-defense workshop specialist. Dina, who's involved with the program, was our arts director. Mm -hmm. It was just, they, it, everyone was, had so many diverse talents yes. and uh, were willing to, to help with camp. So some of them are, are still involved. Uh, Shelly's going to be our MC in October. And I, at I that hope. camp, there's a good amount of the entrepreneurs from this past cohort that they may not, they don't even all know you, but they right. know that Kristen came through the program, so they're trying to get a group together to go. To so come to summer camp. Yeah, there's some great yeah. camaraderie uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to people that are in the program with, with the rest of the alumni as well. Right. And let's talk about the cash. Okay. Um, right. So how would someone comes in, and how do they get the cash, the funding? How does it work? So it's cash prizes. Not everybody that comes into the program is guaranteed a certain amount of money or, or even any money. Um, this is for the accelerator program. For the accelerator Cost. program, there's $20,000 that will be awarded throughout the entire year. And at the end of the first three months, which is the mo more intensive part, we have this great big celebration where we invite the community in. The entrepreneurs have a table set up showing their business. We bring in a great keynote speaker. And then we'll give half of the money that night. So that will be $10,000 of these big checks. Wow. And the way that that gets chosen, it's a very big combination of things. It's um, the entrepreneurs at the end of the program do a 10-minute presentation to a panel of judges. We also have the cohort give us their thoughts on who they think should receive cash prizes. Uh, we also are taking into account their attendance, their participation throughout the program. And we have them very specifically say, if I win money, it would go towards this. We have leadership committees in all of these communities that have eForAll that really sit down and look at where this money will go that will make an impact. So kind of looking at all those other, you know, attendance and how they did at this performance, but also we have this great entrepreneur in Fall River. They opened uh, Juice Cafe, which is healthy food in a neighborhood that doesn't really have quick and healthy options. And he is somebody that I kind of alluded to earlier, quickly got up to 30 employees. He opened his That's second amazing. location in Newport, Rhode Island, and he's looking to open more. And he will say when he looks at his juicer, he thinks, Ephraim bought me that. Because he very Jeez. specifically said, I need a juicer, and it would help me produce this much, and it would help my business with this. And 
So that that's taken into account as well of what will this money really do for this business? How will it bring them forward? And Kristen, you won money, is that right? I did. Excellent, excellent. What did you use it towards? I, I put it, it leveraged camps, so I put deposits down to reserve camps so that I could hold more events. And what exactly did you find was most helpful that you needed? Uh, accountability. That okay. It, I'm, no, I'm, I very, much a, be, I'm very much yeah. a self-motivated person anyway, but it, yeah. it helps to know that, you know, today's Monday, I have a meeting Tuesday, I better stay up till midnight tonight instead of 10 p.m. because I have to meet these people and I want to, to you know, 100, hit 110%. So, right. Right. Yeah. And one other good point, you asked earlier about, um, you know, did e for all kind of guide you to getting that, a niche for a customer? And that really is a big part of the program. At the very beginning, the first few weeks is all about figure out who your customer is. So when yeah. Kristen yeah. goes to her mentors and says, I think it's CrossFit, and they say, I don't know about that, yeah. e all basically tells anybody, go out and test it. Whoever you think it is, go test it. Yeah. Do a survey. Now, would have somebody like Kristen done it on her own? Probably, because you know, she has that in her. Some people mm -hmm. like are like, oh my God, are you trying to make me right. go and talk to people about this? But you need to test out who your Absolutely. customer is. You need to know your customer before anything. Yep. So Kristen like went and spoke and set a goal. I'm going to speak to this many people at this many camps. So it's even if some of her mentors were thinking like, ah, I don't know, at least she was able to go back and say, hey guys, I have this data. I just proved that, th true. that there is interest in this. And um, that's definitely the biggest goal of the, I mean, of the whole accelerator. But really that's how it all starts. The very first it's, it's kind of the program is like in three phases. It's who is your customer, what's the value? Then we start talking about the nuts and bolts, how would you make it work? And then at the end, it really gets into, now how do you go out and sell this? And that's mm -hmm. when we start bringing in sales, presentation skills. And we do a whole session on social impact and figuring out why you're even doing it, what are your values, and what is gonna stay true to you throughout this business. You know, about impact, e for all has had kind of an amazing impact, right? So. How many jobs have you created so far? So the last time that we took um, surveys of all of the entrepreneurs that have been through the program, we were able to show that we had over 430 jobs that were created. Now, just in the South Coast alone, uh, again, the, the last time that this data was taken about six months ago, out of just 47 entrepreneurs, 155 jobs were created uh, in the local we say South Coast, but as I said, some people are coming from the Cape, right. some as far as Rhode Island, some a little south of Boston. And we're really excited to see how these numbers multiply. So here I am telling you in the South Coast it was 155, but I know that number is, you know, it, it changes it's over time. Fair. I just got a text from somebody the other day, I just hired my new, my next employee. So Really um, a direct impact. Oh it must, yes, it must be a great sure. feeling, you know? For sure. And um, how much revenue have you raised, or have you? So revenue again, e for all uh, wide. The last time it was documented is nine point nine million, and again that number changes every day. So I know the next time that these numbers come out in a few months, we're going to see that definitely well over ten million. And you're getting people who uh, were unemployed previously unemployed. You're getting them jobs, and not only getting them jobs, but they're running their own businesses. Yep, a percentage of the entrepreneurs that come in the program are unemployed, not all. Some people are, are still working and they're coming to the classes. Yeah, um, I think it's almost 60% previously almost 60 unemployed. Previously unemployed that are in the program, yes. And how about your gender? Do you have a lot of women? And yeah, we have over 70% women coming through the program. Wow, that's amazing, mm -hmm. yeah. So you're really getting at a target that doesn't normally start to run businesses. Yeah. And Every business has to start small, right? I mean, even you know the biggest companies in the world, Apple, once only had one or two employees, right? It's so true. it's it's amazing, yeah. It's true. So um, let's talk about the pitch contest. That's pretty interesting. Shark Tank without the teeth, yeah. right? Okay. So how does that work? So say somebody out there and right now has an idea. Good question. So and and just to reiterate too, I mean, what's a little confusing for people when they keep hearing startup and an idea. We're open to anybody as, like, literally it could be, I had an idea two weeks ago, or it could be something that they have been working on, they just need that push. Yeah. So we're not here to help existing businesses that have been around for five years and they have millions of revenue. There are other programs that could help them. We are looking in that early stage of starting up. So sometimes when people come to a pitch contest, they do already have the product, but they're still, they're trying to push it or they're trying to pivot into a new direction. 
So with the pitch contest, it's free to apply. Everything that we do at E4L is actually free to the entrepreneur. And we do a lot of free events for the community as well. So it's free to apply. People apply through the website. And E4L will choose for each pitch contest up to 20 of the entrepreneurs to set up at a table. And they can yeah. talk to the community, get emails signed up, get some feedback. And then eight of those people will stand up and do a two and a half minute pitch in front of a panel of judges and the audience. And the top place prize winner will win $1,000, and then there's a few more prizes, $750 for second place, $500 for third place, and then we even let the audience choose their favorite. Wow. So the audience gets to text in their favorite, that person takes home $500. So um, it's a very fun night, a lot of people that attend, you know, they feel like they're kind of at a game show because it's high energy, yeah. and especially that they get to vote, which is really fun. But people that leave it, the entrepreneurs, even if they don't get a chance to pitch, again, the feedback that they get from the community, the encouragement, the connections is so valuable. And I imagine some people might walk in, oh, they're not sure, and then maybe they turn out to be fan favorite, and they walk out thinking, I really have an idea here, yeah, right? Yes, yes. Sure. Fabulous. It's true. Yeah. We've definitely had some people, we kind of joke about it because they'll say, well, my photo was taken on the front page of a newspaper with holding a check. I had to do it. You know, like they know that people are now rooting for them. And it, it was an idea, but they got that vote of confidence and they are publicly recognized that I'm going through with this idea. So and how many minutes forward. for a pitch contest? Two and a half minutes. And, and we do prepare people for it. We do run yeah. a workshop that tells the entrepreneurs, you know, these are the key points to hit. This is what the judges are going to vote on. We allow them to practice with us. So we really do a lot to help prepare the entrepreneurs if they want the help. So, Kristen, you won money from the pitch contest as well as money for being in the cohort. Is that no, right? An award? No pitch contest oh, money. You I did didn't, not. I didn't. But I bet I did. you would now, though. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. No, I, I did participate in a pitch contest. That was my first kind of interaction with the e for all program. Uh, and I had a little bit of experience with it because on Cape Cod, there are similar programs called Startup Weekend, and uh, they're the champions are kind of the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Um, and so I'd, I'd done some of those pitch contests and, and worked on a business idea through those kind of, it's essentially like a mini E for all, um, these startup weekends. It's a weekend instead of three, uh, like three months, a year long program. Um, and so I knew I had interest in it. And I spoke with Shelly and Jeremiah, who are the administrators of the program. And they said, you know what, start out, come to the pitch contest. And so it was a great introduction to get a feel of the program and, and just, yeah, to, because if you're going to pitch your idea, you have to have a very good idea about what you're pitching. So it gives right. you a, a, a great opportunity to kind of think, hash through some of the ideas. And do they ask you questions after you run through your pitch? The judges they have do. an opportunity. I think they only have one one question. One question. Mm -hmm. yeah. one question. Yeah. Oh, so it's, yeah. it's quick. Yeah, yeah. easy. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. great. Yeah. And you walk them through it. So you really hold people's hands on how to get funding, how to present yourself. It's yeah. true. I mean, the E4L staff will help as much as needed. If somebody has a hard time you know, with English and they need help writing an application, the staff will help. I mean, the staff will help a lot with, with preparation for, for anybody. You know, some people just, you know, they just fill it out. They're not able to attend the workshop and they still do fine. But, it, you know, it is definitely helpful. Um, the workshop's good, too, because it's just another opportunity for entrepreneurs to meet other people that are in the same boat. Sure. And, you know, one thing that we say at e for all it's we know that entrepreneurship is a lonely place and sure. we don't want it to feel that way. We want to make sure that people recognize that there are people in their own community that will help them. And I think it's 99% of the economy is small business, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's an important thing yeah. to be, yeah, they're, they're a big employer. So um, somebody wants to be a mentor or they want to do your organization, where can they learn about it? So our website is eforall.org, so mm -hmm. E-F-O-R-A-L-L.org, and there are links that talk about being a mentor and how to be a mentor. There are applications for the accelerator program and when the pitch contests are available as well. And for mentors, you're looking for specifically business people, marketing people? Yeah, really anybody with any type of business um, skills. Like we said, sometimes people are generalists, sometimes more specific. We also work with nonprofits as well. So some of the uh, entrepreneurs in the program are going the nonprofit route. So if anybody is sort of an executive director or they have grant writing or fundraising experience, that, that can really help as well. 
And I really want to thank you both for this. This is amazing. Of it really course. gets people thinking, I think. It's such an important program. Sure. So thanks very much for joining us, and I want to thank you, and let's all keep looking for solutions. Thank you.